Hey guys, we are in the basement. Today we're gonna do a John's Arcade tech video and we're gonna do something actually I think really cool because you see, I've been wanting to do this for a very long time. Now down here, I have my Major Havoc. Now Major Havoc was released in two forms. Atari had the dedicated version, okay? And then they also had the conversion kit that they sold to convert Tempest and Space Duels and Gravitars and Black Widows to Major Havoc. And that's what I have right here. This used to be a Tempest and it has the official Atari conversion kit installed in it. And the kit came basically with side art, you know, over here, you can see the side art. It came with a new control panel overlay and it came with a new marquee. And of course it came with a PCB. Now, the downfall of this though, is that you see the original dedicated version, the controller was not the spinner. This is a Tempest spinner, okay? The original dedicated version had a roller and, and this is the roller right here. So I have a new roller, okay? And uh, Arcade Shop sells this. It's a reproduction of the, uh, the roller that you find on the dedicated Major Havocs. And today, we're gonna install this on this game. Now, this is the original Tempest control panel and it does not have a hole cut out for the roller. So I had a couple choice, I, I, I just burped, that was gross. Mm. So I had a couple choices here. Uh, I cut a hole here uh, for the roller controller or I get a new control panel. Now Takeman on Clove has done reproduction uh, reproductions of the Tempest control panel but with the hole cut out for the Major Havoc roller controller right here. I mean, look at this thing. This guy does some great work reproducing these metal control panels. I, I purchased a few from him now. I've got my Journey uh, control panel from him. Uh, is that it, really? I guess that's it. I got the Journey and then this one. I feel like I got something else. Oh, I, I got all the metal parts for my Quantum and the Quantum control panel from him, too. But this guy does some fantastic work. Um, he found some machine shop or something to make these control panels, and he's doing a bang-up job. And he's doing them right, too, because uh, the bolts for the roller controller are actually on the inside here, and there's no like you know carriage bolts on the top here that would go through the overlay. And I did also get a new reproduction overlay. Uh, this is a Major Havoc overlay from Phoenix Arcade um, that is sized to the Tempest control panel. So today we're gonna put the control panel overlay on this control panel, and then we're gonna wire up our roller controller and all the buttons, and hopefully. It'll all work and then we'll play a game afterwards with the roller control. I'm actually really excited because really, this is not the way to play Major mm. Havoc. You gotta have the roller. So I've been wanting to do this for a long time and I just, I love Major Havoc so much and I just thought it was totally worth it. Um, it's not a cheap mod though because this controller alone is like $200 at arcadeshop.com. Um, but I just felt like I had to do this because I, I was worried that if I waited any longer, these would not be available because I think there's very limited supply of these. And I think that the principle here, it, it, it works just like the spinner or a trackball. It has a little optical board here. And I think we're just gonna plug in the spinner uh, harness from that game into this and then we're done. Now this does have a light bulb on the bottom and we're gonna have to figure out a way to wire this up. We need to get power to this. Now it's my understanding though that on the dedicated Major Havoc, this light bulb actually blinked in tandem with these these lights here. Um, and actually, the original dedicated Major Havoc did not have one player and two player start. It actually had two buttons, and these were light up buttons. And these buttons were double duty on the dedicated Major Havoc. Um, basically, this was the one player and two player start button, and it was also, this button was also fire and jump, and then this one was also shield. So they had two buttons uh, that both started the game and then also had these other functions, and they were lit up buttons. And, and so instead of having these separate one player and two player buttons that light up these buttons lit up and then I believe then that these wires were wired into the roller controller so that it in a track when this is blinking the roller controller is also blinking and then when the game starts these turn solid and then the roller controller would also be solid so I just don't want to wire 5 volts or 12 volts right up to this bulb uh, because it would just be solidly lit all the time and that's not how it originally was so we're gonna take our time and figure this out we're gonna wire into here and that way the bulb will, will flash and then it'll also be solid when the game's playing alright so let's get set up the first thing I want to do though um, 
we're gonna have to pull this old control panel off. Uh, the hardest part of this video is gonna be putting the new overlay on uh, the new control panel because that's always stressful. But before we do that, I want to actually check out the wiring in here to see what we're dealing with. Uh, let me just unlatch the control panel here. Um, because, so you can see here, all right, so we've got the original connector here for the spinner. And that's just gonna plug right into the roller. Uh, these two buttons are gonna be untouched. And then over here, these are the, the, the cone buttons that light up, the one player and start. And there's four wires on here. Uh, two of these wires are the power for the LED, and then the other two are just for the switch, uh, like normally open and, 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 and negative or something, or uh, ground. So these two right here, should be our voltage. And what I want to do before we do anything is I'm going to disconnect these and I'm going to plug it into the light bulb on the roller controller to see if it works. So let me get this tripod set up and we'll do that real quick. Okay, so before I take this all apart, I just want to verify that these two wires here are going to be the voltage that we need to light this light bulb. And if I look right now, uh, it should be flashing. So if, if, if my theory is correct, I should be able to plug these in to the bulb and it'll flash. And if it does, then I know I can just tap into here. Hmm. It's not doing it. These are really loose though. Let me see if I can get these on here. Nothing. Okay. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna get my multimeter and I'm gonna see if we can figure out what is what here. Maybe this is the uh, the positive and this is not the negative. I think maybe this black one is. So let me put these back on here and let's see if we're lighting up again. Okay, I'm gonna get my multimeter. I'll be right back. All right, I got my multimeter and basically what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to figure out where the voltage is that we can tap into and send to the bulb here on the roller controller. And I thought it was these two, but apparently it's not. I think I do think though that this red one is our positive, and then if I were to just kind of ground this over here, yeah, so there's our, there's our five volts right there. Um, so we do have five volts, red and then ground. Um, I do think the black is probably ground though and not, so I need to tap into I think the red and the black here. So I think, so let's try these two here. So if I plug this one, and these are really loose, so I'm gonna have to, there we go. Okay, so that's our, so it's only five volts, so that bulb's not very bright. And it's not flashing either. Huh, maybe this is not gonna work. Because it's not flashing, and it should be. And it's not very bright either. I wonder if I need to tap into 12 volts somewhere and bring that up. Maybe in the coin door. Hmm. Well, my theory about how I was going to do this is actually wrong. Because I really wanted this to flash. And it's not flashing. Because right now the LEDs are flashing. And this should be flashing too. Hmm. Why is it not flashing? I wonder if this bulb... What kind of bulb is this? It's a 194, that's a 12 volt bulb. I wanna go get a 555 bulb, which is a, I, I believe a five volt bulb, and let's see how that reacts to that. One sec. Okay, I went and got uh, some 555 volt bulbs, which I believe are five volt bulbs, and I think the bulb that's in here now is a 12 volt, volt bulb. So this should definitely be a lot brighter and maybe we'll get it to flash here. Let's see how this reacts to the five volts on the control panel here. Okay, way brighter. Not flashing though. And it should be, that is weird. I wonder if I take, let me take this one. Nothing. It looks like we're just not going to be able to get this to flash. That's a real bummer. So I don't know why the LED flashes. Let's just take this one. This might be above my pay grade here. I don't, don't really understand it. 
so well I definitely know where to tap in on the control panel here to get the five volts and it's this red one and that black one I really wish it would flash though but I guess we're just gonna have to have a solidly lit track uh, roller so and I'll use the 555, that way we, we have five volts, which is already here on the control panel. Because um, if we tapped into the coin door, um, that would be 12 volts, but that's gonna be a little messy. We're gonna have to go down there. So I think we'll, we'll use the five volts that's right here. And uh, I just wanna verify those voltages. Let's read it with my multimeter. Yeah, it's 5 volts. Okay. I think that to get it to flash, it's probably to require some kind of circuit or something that, that's beyond my pay grade. So, we'll just uh, tap into the 5 volts here and we'll just get uh, a solidly lit light. I guess that's just the way it's going to be. So, Alright, so now that we've verified where to tap in here um, when we do this... Um, at the desk it, it should go pretty smooth so okay so the first thing I'm gonna do is I want to remove this old control panel and uh, shouldn't be too hard it's basically just held on on the inside uh, with some nuts and where is my socket set let me uh, grab that all right I got my socket set here so the first thing you want to do is uh, disconnect the Molex that goes to the control panel um, and it's really on here He's old Pete. I'm gonna get a screwdriver in one sec. Okay, I got it off. That was just like really on there and it just took a lot of force and eventually I got it off. Okay, so let's get the old control panel off and this should be fairly straightforward. On the inside here, uh, there are some nuts and uh, we just need to remove those and they're they're just, uh, there's, there's two right there, there's uh, one behind this piece of wood, and then there's one over here. So I'm just going to take my little socket set, and we're just going to undo these. Just need to find the right size. Okay. And just going to take my little socket set here, and just go ahead and undo this. Okay, so we just got a little carriage bolt and some and some washers, and this one is kind of going to be a little tough to get to. I see there's a little date stamp on here, September twenty third, nineteen eighty one. So that's when this cabinet was inspected. It says inspected by eleven. Uh, some old stuff. Okay. All right. And then just this one here. And that's it. And then the control panels will just basically fall off. so we have the old control panel off all right so now what I want to do is I want to put that overlay on the new control panel so why don't we get set up for that okay what we're about to do here is probably one of my least favorite things to do in the whole wide world and that is applying a control panel overlay on a control panel I've done this a gazillion times and it's always super stressful so uh, the first thing I want to do though is I want to get these buttons okay because we're going to use these to line up the overlay on 
uh, the control panel itself. So I'm gonna come over here and uh, I'm gonna take off uh, I'm gonna take off the old buttons off the old control panel because we're gonna need those to kind of help get the alignment of the new overlay. So I'm gonna come on here and just undo these. They call them, I guess, PAL nuts, these, these big aluminum nuts. Um, and I just wanna get the big buttons out of here. And yellow, the yellow button was in the middle and the red one was towards the edge. Okay, so we got the buttons here. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the buttons to kinda guide us. Um, get this out of here. We're gonna use these buttons to kinda, you know, give us a little bit of a, a way to align the new overlay. And uh, so Takeman sold this as like a little kit. Um, he got together with uh, with Darren from Phoenix Arcade, and he offered the control panel and the overlay. I think it was about a hundred bucks total for both, which is not bad, really, considering all the work that went into this. Okay, so oh, okay, so the hole for the trackball is not cut out of this, which is not a big deal, um, but the buttonholes are okay. And I, I'm guessing that Darren did that because he probably offers this for uh, if you want the spinner, uh, which I have now, or if you're going to use the roller. So, okay, so let's see how this is going to go. It's going to go like this on here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these buttons in here like so to help line this all up. Okay. And then we're just going to tape it down. Trying to get these buttons all the way in. Now, buttons, you'll you'll notice they have a little uh, a little groove right here, okay? And the control panel also has that little groove, and so that kind of prevents the buttons from spinning. So we're gonna just kind of put it in here till it locks into the control panel. Okay. and tighten these up real quick. Just taking the pal nut and I'm just putting it on their side. So this is the way to do it though. Just throw the buttons in here. You can do this with any kind of control panel and it just puts it in the right spot. It's just, it's in the right spot. If I wanted to, I could even put the comb buttons on right now, but these two buttons here are enough. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna tape this down. And uh, so let's tape down. Ow. I'm just going to take some masking tape and we're going to tape just going to tape this in place okay and we'll just go ahead and put a few pieces everywhere let me just break some of this off doing this to kind of hold it in place. I want to see my buttonholes here. Okay. I'm not 
really liking how that's sitting, to be honest. trying to get this as close to the edge as I can. There's a little bit of black that's being shown over here, but everything is really lining up okay, so. And when I go around this corner, there's a little latch I'm trying to avoid. Okay. Not hard, just take your time. If you do this little prep work first, you know, by taping it down, it just makes it a lot easier. And I know other guys use clamps instead of tape. You can buy those little, uh, they're just like little, little clamps, little spring-loaded clamps that you can put on there instead of the tape. I always use the tape. Okay, so we have it in place. Okay, so the, the back end here is all taped in and the buttons are also holding it in. And so it's pretty much all lined up. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start on the other side. We're basically gonna start uh, removing the adhesive backer on this side and then work our way that way. And let's see how this lines up. God, it doesn't really go to the edge, huh? I guess that's how it's supposed to be. This wraps around like so. Okay. Yeah, I think I think we're gonna be okay. So what I want to do just trying to think about this. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove the paper. And then we're gonna just basically stick it down like this and then go around the corner, ouch. And then do this back part first. This and that, and then we're gonna then take our buttons and our tape off and then do the other side. Stay on there, okay. Okay, so here we go, we're just gonna go for it. Really should get some scissors before I go any further here. Okay. Let me get this in the camera better. All right. So I'm just taking the adhesive off and uh, peeling it back. And I am a little nervous, not really, but a little bit. Don't want to screw this up because it would be an expensive mistake. Okay. All right, and now I'm going to take my scissors and just cut a straight line. Okay, so now I'm going to pull this back and then we're just going to start. Oh shit. <laughs> Get in there. Damn it, this thing wants to slide. Come on. 
Come on, John. Trying to get it to start. was kind of stressful. All right. And now we're just trying to get any air bubbles out that might be there. And then we're going to make this turn. Just pushing the air bubbles out. There's some okay. So is this fun? Watching me almost screw that up. So I do have some air bubbles here. They're all, they're coming out. Just pushing them to the edge. And they're moving. Okay. You can get like a credit card or a little plastic squeegee, but I'm just doing it with my hand right now to push these air bubbles out. This one is almost at the edge. On your mark. There we go. Okay. Boy, I got a lot of air bubbles this time around. There we go. Okay. All right. Feels good. No air bubbles. All right, so now we can take our buttons off and our tape, and then do the other side. So we're halfway done. And uh, I'm telling you, man, I I've done this a whole bunch of times and it's always, always stressful. You just always have these moments where you're like, oh my God, I'm going to screw this up. And uh, try doing it in front of a camera too. <laughs> Ugh, that sucked. All right, so let me get my tape all off of here. <sighs> tape is leaving a little bit of residue, which is probably why those guys use clamps, but it'll come off, it's just masking tape. This is like old masking tape too. You should probably get new stuff. That blue stuff's pretty good. Okay. 
All right, so let's take a peek here. Everything's still lining up. Um, so now what we want to do is basically just do the opposite now, or just repeat what we did. We're going to pull this back, and then we're going to pull off the paper from the other side, and and then just do the other half. And because we had our buttons in there when we taped down the other side, we know it's all going to line up here. So, all right. And I'm just kind of pulling the paper as we go. And I'm just pushing down. Do your best to not get air bubbles. I always use my hand. I know you can use one of those flat squeegee tools that I always use for side art. Alright. Okay. So we're going to have to go around the corner here, which is going to be a little bit tricky. So. We don't have any air bubbles, which is good. So I'm just going to go ahead and just pull this off. Okay, so all of the... Okay. And then we just need to do this bend. It shouldn't be too big of a deal. I've heard you can get a hair dryer at this stage to do this bend. Might not be a bad idea. Let's see how it goes without it. Okay. That's it. God, that was stressful. All right, now we need to cut the hole for the roller. And I'm gonna get my X-Acto blade set and we'll do that. But let's take a look at our work here. Um, no, I got a, some minor air bubbles on this side, like one. I should be able to push out, there we go. No. There we go. Nope. Keep it moving back. With these air bubbles too, sometimes you can just take a needle and kind of pop them more or less if you can't rub them to the sides. All right, good. No air bubbles. Nice and smooth. Let's take a look at our work. That looks pretty good, right? So we just need to cut this hole out for the uh, roller controller, but uh, that was a success. A little stressful as usual, but good nonetheless. <laughs> so what'd you think? Did I do an okay job? I think I did. This looks pretty good. Uh, I don't like how it's all... Is there air bubbles or no? Yeah, we got a couple in here still. All right, I think that's pretty good. I'll rub this all out later. There's like, in here, very minor air bubbles. And now it's, I hear it. It's right here. You can hear it, but you can't really see it. It's probably okay. This is all good. It's just in this area. And this is all good here. Hey, it looks pretty good. All right, we're going to stop. It looks good. Well, let me get my X-Acto blade set, and then we'll cut this out for the roller. Okay, I got my X-Acto blade. I just put a brand new blade on here because I don't want to uh, don't want to cheap out here. So 
Uh, I'm wondering what's my best plan attack to cut this out from the back or cut it out from the front. Um, I'm kind of thinking the back here. So I'm just going to use the metal as a guide and we're just going to cut this square out. A little stressful. Okay. Okay, I'm just going to come in from the front with my X-Acto and just kind of clean this up. Okay, looks okay. If I should have went through the front, whatever. It's fine. All right, so we got our nice hole right there for our roller controller. And let's see how that fits and looks. And then... Pretty damn sexy, I must say. So there it is. So it looks like, though, I need some nuts um, to hold this in that I do not have. I'm gonna have to go to the hardware store. There we go. Okay. Just gonna try to clean this up a little better. That looks pretty good. Okay, so I'm gonna actually have to go to the hardware store because I need nuts to attach this to the here um, I don't have them so I'm gonna go to the hardware store and I'm gonna get these nuts and I'll be right back um, but yeah we're almost done pretty exciting all right guys we are back I went to the hardware store um, I actually brought uh, the little bolt that was holding the Tempest spinner on the control panel. Uh, it's the same size that are, are, as these studs, except the Tempest only had two, and I need four to properly mount this. So I went and got some of these. They're uh, 1024 stop nuts. Um, I also got a couple washers, too. I got some washers. Uh, I don't know, number eight washers. I just kind of matched them to the washers that were on the uh, Tempest uh, spinner. Okay, so this is going to be pretty simple to do here. Um, I do want to put this, I think like this, so that the, uh, the, 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 the pins here for the Molex are on that side, because all the wiring is basically coming from this side. Okay, that looks pretty good. I'm wondering if I should throw an LED in here. I wonder if that would look kind of cool. I do have some spare LEDs on my shelf. So I'm throwing some washers on here, and then I've got these little, uh, they call them stop nuts. They're little nylon uh, nuts. Uh, tight.
Okay, we got it all screwed in there, and uh, let's just see how it operates. I noticed that there's like some adjustments down here, because these are kind of loose, and I'm not really sure if I'm supposed to be adjusting the, the bearings here. There's like these rollers with bearings on them, and then they kind of sit in these little these little guys right here, and then there's these screws that you, where you can adjust the height uh, of where that roller sits. So I just want to make sure. Seems really smooth. Okay. Boy, this is gonna be awesome. I can't wait to play the game with this. All right, that's pretty good. All right, so that's on there. Now we need to move the buttons and everything else over to here. Uh, so I'm gonna come over here and we're gonna start on doing all of this stuff. Um, and uh, I do wanna note here that the yellow uh, wire is for the yellow button and the red wire is for the red button right here. I already pulled those out because we use those to hold the uh, control panel overlay on. Um, and uh, so we're gonna disconnect this and I'm just gonna leave the old spinner in its where it, where it is. I, I'm not really sure what I'm gonna do with this control panel actually. Um, I'm gonna throw this back on here because I pulled it off when I went to the hardware store. So let's see, we have these little wire ties here that I'm going to have to just cut off. Um, okay, so the harness is pretty much free here. There's a ground wire that goes there. Now these, uh, the cone buttons, the Atari, th these are a little tricky here. And I kind of got to pay attention because there's four mo uh, little connectors on here. And uh, I want to make sure that I do that right, and I, I always get confused by these buttons down here. Um, if you look, so these are for the uh, the light up one player and two player start buttons, and there's four wires, and so we got to kind of pay, pay attention to how they're wired. Um, so it goes black, white, red, white. Um, actually, black with the white and the black. So I think I'm going to do those one at a time. Yeah, I think I'm going to do these. I just don't want to mess. Actually, what am I saying? I don't even need to disconnect them. I can unscrew them, leave the wires on, and then just move them over. Can I do this? I think I can. Yep. I'm just gonna leave the wires on. There's no reason to take them off. Okay. And then I definitely won't screw it up. Okay. These Atari cone buttons are uh, hard to replace. They're really expensive. So you don't wanna break them or lose them. Okay, and then we have this ground wire that's on here. I need some pliers or something. Get this off. Uh, let me grab my pliers. All right, so there's just a little nut here holding this ground wire on. And I'm just gonna see if I can get in here. It's really cramped. thing spinning and uh, 
how the heck am I supposed to get a Phillips screw on the top there? Because I'd have to bend this. Jesus. Huh. That's not easy. Yeah, there's no way. Unless I just bend this whole thing back. Yeah. I'm just gonna do that. Boy. That is in a tough spot. The screwdriver is too big. So I bent it back some more, and now I can get a screwdriver on here. There's just no way to get to that screw head without bending this metal back. Kind of weird. On your mark. Okay. So that ground wire is now free, and now we can move the old harness with the buttons and everything to our new control panel. So let's go come over here and do that. So is this fun? It's kind of common sense stuff, I think. Um, okay, so let's try to remember how this went. All right, so uh, this, yeah, this was the, this was this, this one goes here, and this one goes here. I remember right. Let's think about that. Because when I was looking at it, this one, yeah, that's how it goes. It goes, this one goes here, this one goes here. The one with the grays goes towards the back. And then here's our little ground screw. Um, yellow is shield, red is there, okay, okay, pretty, pretty straightforward, so let's tighten down our, our, uh, our cone buttons here, and the cone buttons is just a plastic cone, and then this side here is threaded, and we're just gonna... Just thread it from the other side, tighten it down by hand. Okay. And then same thing with the uh, the other one. Okay. And you don't want to go too nuts when you're tightening down the uh, cone buttons because you can strip them really easy. All right, so our ground wire is going to go there. Our yellow goes here and our red goes there. And let me grab our buttons and the pal nuts. Okay, so we're going to come in from the front and throw our red in. These buttonholes are really tight. You gotta like jam them in there. Get set. Jesus. Okay. So, yellow, 
And these are like the leaf switch style buttons, which are my favorite. Very simple operations, just two blades that make contact when you push the button. Okay, I usually just hand tighten those. Okay. Alright. Okay, so we have the ground wire to deal with. I'm gonna come in here with my pliers and just just give these pal nuts a little bit of a turn. Okay. Okay. Alright, so now we gotta make our connection here to the spinner. Um, which is this little Molex connector. We're using the same one um, that was on the Tempest spinner, and we're just going to plug it now into the optic board on the roller right there. And so the only thing left is this ground wire, and then we got to get power to this bulb. Um, so let's go and hook up our ground wire. This is going to be a little tricky here. Because you remember I had to bend this tab back on the Tempest to get to that screw head, so unless I want to do that again, I'm just going to have to tighten it by hand. All right, so we're pretty much done here. Um, let's think about this. So now we need to get power here, and I wanted to tap into these over here. And uh, I had it like this before. Okay. I'm just tr turning these where they naturally want to go with the harness. Okay. All right, so now we need to get power to the light bulb, and I wanted to tap into the red and the black over here. And we got to figure out a, a nice, clean way of doing this. Um, so let me look at these connectors. Do I have these? I don't. Not this style. These are really small. So... I'm thinking about cutting the black wire and cutting the red and splicing into it and then running two new wires over to here. And I'm just trying right now to think of the cleanest way to do that. I gotta look around and see what I have as far as connectors. Um, I don't even think I have any heat shrink tubing. I do have these two guys, and we can use those to make our connection here and here with our new wires. Okay, so that's going to work. Okay, so we need those. And uh, let me see what kind of connectors I have so we can tap into this here. Okay, we're ready to do the wiring now. I just tore my whole basement apart trying to find uh, Hink Shriek. Hink heat shrink heat shrink tubing um, and we're going to use this to basically cover our connection so um, so you remember earlier when we were testing this on the game we, we figured out that the red and the black here will give us the five volts that we need to power that bulb um, so we're going to tap into this so I'm just going to come in here I'm going to cut one of these red wires and we're going to tap in right here and I'm going to come in and strip it Okay, and this wire goes into this twist tie. I'm gonna actually uh, the zip tie. I'm just gonna pull it out of it because I'm gonna need the extra slack. Okay, and then I'm gonna take my uh, my heat shrink tubing, 
which is right here. We'll use the white one. And uh, I'm just going to cut about a one inch piece. And I'm going to slide it on the wire. Okay. And then I'm going to take my new wire that we're going to, this is going to be our, our tap in wire basically. And I'm going to strip one end of it. I think this is about 22 gauge. Um, you can use 18 or 22 and I just want to basically join all of these together Let me sit down here okay all together. I'm twisting all three of these wires together. Okay. Like so. Okay. And then I'm going to hit a little solder on these. Okay. Just heating the wire up. Okay, now I should be able to kind of bend this down and then we can slide our heat shrink tubing over this to cover our connection. There we go. Okay. Now I'm just going to take a lighter here and kind of clean that up with our heat shrink tubing. Perfect. Okay. So now we've tapped in there and then we're going to run this down here. And now I'm going to do the same for the black wire. Uh, so let's come in here. You guys can see that okay. On your mark. So you can see where we tapped in. Okay, so now I'm going to come in and just do the same thing on the black, which is our ground. Strip it back. And uh, I only have, I don't have any black wire, so we'll just use this green. It's fine. Um, okay. on this probably more than I need but it's gonna make my life easier okay and I'm just twisting these three wires onto each other oh, I didn't put my heat shrink tubing on here damn it When I did this other one, I should have put the heat shrink tubing on that side, on the left side, so that the wire comes out of it that way, but oh well. Okay. There's not a tremendous amount of slack on here, but just want them to kind of hold there, and then I can hit them with the solder. Okay. Let's 
isn't too hard. Okay, let that cool off. And then we'll yeah, green wire. Just come in here with our heat shrink tubing. That already started to shrink because uh, the heat from the soldering iron. Come on. Slide over. Damn it. I hope I don't have to redo this. I think I do. The uh, heat shrink tubing like melted. Let me just undo this connection. I'm gonna have to redo my heat shrink tubing. Ugh. What a hack you are, John. <laughs> All right. Okay, let me get another piece of heat shrink tubing and this time I'm going to make sure it's far away from the soldering iron. Okay, let that cool off before I even attempt to bring this over. Press it with my pliers so I can get the heat shrink tubing over it. There we go. Much better. Okay. Now, come in here with our lighter and just shrink this down. And that's a nice, clean, professional wire tap there. So we've got now our red and our black. I mean, our red and our green that are tapped into the red and the black. And then we're gonna use this to run over to our light bulb. So let's... Don't wanna trim it too short, it's gonna have a little bit of slack in it. That's good. our wires okay stripped it back a little too far for our quick connects I don't like how that one stripped okay twisting these and I'm trim them back a little bit yeah you want about a little over eighth of an inch, right around an eighth of an inch exposed. And then we're just going to throw these little connectors on here, little spade connectors. And uh, I always crimp them down with this thing. Okay, got one. Let's do our next one. Okay. 
Look at that. My brute strength just destroyed it. God darn it. Whatever. Just redo it. Okay, so we're ready to make our connection over here for our bulb. We have our positive and negative 5 volts. Um, I do want to clean this up a little bit with some uh, wire ties. It's going to come in here and I think these will work. I'll just kind of make it look professional. Here we tapped in. Okay. On your mark. Maybe I'll run this underneath. Let's trim the wire ties yeah. off. Done. Maybe I'll throw a zip strip right here. So that looks pretty original, right? Not too bad of a hack job. Okay, we're done, guys. We're ready to give this a shot and. Uh, Hopefully our wire tap was good and everything still works. And so let's go over to the game and then uh, let's screw this on. We're gonna bolt the, con the new control out control panel onto the game and we'll try it out. Okay, so we're ready to uh, put the new control panel on our game. And it's gonna go like this. And uh, so what we need to do is throw Let's kind of see how this goes. It goes like this. So we're going to have to throw our carriage bolts in here. Like so. And I'm just using the original hardware. And on the other side, there's just a washer and a nut that holds this on. Okay, we got it all bolted down. So now we all need to, need to do now is make our connection with the, at the Molex connector here, and uh, that should be it. 
And as soon as we plug this in, that we should see that light on the uh... okay. So looking good. We got our uh, track ball, a roller ball is lighting. Okay. And uh, let's see what's happening here. super smooth. All right, so let's see. Something with, I, I think there's an adjustment on these rollers. I don't know. Don't look into that. It doesn't feel silky smooth. I'm going to have to spend some time, I think, adjusting uh, the bearings down here. Because um, it's not buttery smooth. It's kind of loose. Yeah, that's okay. Alright, let me lock this down. So, did we do it right? <laughs> we'll find out here in a second. So, let me turn the light off and just kind of, let's just kind of look at our work. Um, let me turn the light off on the camera. So there you go, look at that. That pretty cool, huh? The glowing roller. Um, that's pretty awesome. So, all right, so let's, let's play a game. Let's see how this works. Uh, again, fire, jump, shield, one player, two player, um, and then our roller, which is gonna move everything left and right. And I can tell it's working because it's cycling through. All right, so let's start a game. One player start. Okay, that button's still working. Okay, our roller's working left and right. That button's working. Wow, this is so weird. I was so used to that spinner. Okay, so everything's working. Wow, it's, it's kind of weird actually. I'm so used to that uh, spinner. Okay. All right. see if our shield's working. It is. Okay, so everything works. All of our buttons are working. Our wire tap worked. And uh, it's going to take some while to get used to this roller, I can tell you right now. But it seems like I have a little more quicker movement. Pretty awesome, actually. Um, I'm gonna research this though. I, I don't. I'm wondering if there's uh, a setting on the board for the roller, or and just I, I want to learn how to adjust it with the bearings because there's definitely an adjustment there. I might not just be used to it. By the way, I love me some Major Havoc. This game is just a shit. It's such an interesting game, and I think it's so cool that it's a vector game. It's so unique. If this was a raster game, I don't think the experience would be quite the same. Ah. So by the way, the object of the game here is we gotta get the core, and then you need to get out before it blows up. And you can see on the top the reactor time 
32 seconds before it blows up. And I do have a shield, which I'm going to use right... No, I didn't need it. All right, let's get out. All right. So we're doing okay. I'm getting a little better at this game. Boy, that tapper behind us is annoying, isn't it? these like swastika things are coming down and they're building a maze that we're gonna have to navigate with our ship unless we die <laughs> so, so yeah this roller is pretty cool man I, I'm so not used to it because I was used to that spinner and I think I'm gonna spend some time maybe fine-tuning the adjustments on there to make it silky silky smooth I feel like there's some friction boy I'm I feel like I'm doing that part better than ever, though. Ah. So anyway, that's it, guys. Did you like that video? Kind of a different one, right? Uh, but yeah, look at that. Let's look again. Oh, that look awesome. So there you have it. That's how to install the roller controller on a major Havoc. And uh, that wasn't too bad, was it? All right, guys, before I let you go, I want to clarify and clear up a couple of things here because I think I had some of my facts wrong in this video. And also, I figured something out. So it is the next day here, okay? And I was talking to my buddy Jay about this, and I was saying, hey, I really wanted the light bulb on the roller controller to flash uh, in unison with the cone buttons on the front here, okay? And I told him that I tapped into the red and the black wire on one of the switches, and that gave me my five volts that is powering the 555 bulb here. And I'm talking to Jay, and he's like, well, I'm pretty sure that on the switch, one of the wires is a constant five volts, and one of the other wires is the pulsing five volts that you need to make it flash, okay? So I took my multimeter and uh, I started probing around and I pulled off this white wire and I put my positive lead on it and then I put my black lead on ground and sure enough, I was getting five volts, zero volts, five volts, zero volts. It was pulsing back and forth. And I'm like, aha, I tapped into the wrong spot and that's why it's not flashing. So I came home from work today and I tapped in a, another wire, okay? I tapped into the white wire. Again, that's the one that, that it, where the positive is pulsing from five to zero, five to zero. So I tapped into the white and I added a, a new red wire with a lead on it, okay? And I came home here and again, I, I disconnected the one that's constant five volts and then I plugged in the one that is pulsing five volts, okay? And then I get kind of a dim light bulb here, and then look at this. And then this stopped flashing, okay? Now the two player's still flashing, but where I tapped it into the one player, it stopped flashing. I think because this bulb is drawing too much current, okay? So I took this off, all right, and then I had some LEDs laying around and I threw an LED in there I had this one and and I have two different flavors here. I'm not sure what's what and I threw this in there and I don't know if you could tell But it's flashing, okay? See that and if we were to turn the light off And kind of look at it from the front It's flashing, okay? Not very bright but it's flashing and one and two player are now flashing and that's flashing but it's just not bright because this bulb is like a sideways one it like the lights going the wrong direction and then if I try like another one well I guess I don't have another one so so basically this can be done if you use an LED not the uh, incandescent bulb because the incandescent bulb is drawing too much current and so if you're gonna wire this up the way that I did throughout the whole video, 
it's okay if you tap into the constant five volts over here and you don't want it to blink. But if you want it to blink and you, you tap in over here, you gotta use an LED. And I'm gonna get one of those sideways LEDs that kind of points in and see if that does the job that I'm looking for. But, uh, so yeah, it, it, it can be done, but you just can't use a 555. Now I did, I, I also wanna clarify one more thing because I did check out the Major Havoc schematics and I looked at a, an original dedicated Major Havoc control panel. Again, I don't have a dedicated cabinet, so I'm, I'm just kind of almost guessing or just based on what I think I know. And the original Major Havoc control panel, these buttons did not actually light up. I was wrong, okay? These buttons on the original dedicated control panel are just like these, just opaque red and opaque yellow, leaf switch buttons. And then they had a bulb behind this, and that I think is what flashed. And there's 10 volts coming from the board to here. And that's obviously different than the five volts we have over here, okay? So, on the dedicated, I, I, they, there's a, a, a separate line that's coming to this trackball, and it's 10 volts, and unregulated 10 volts, uh, you can see it in the wiring diagram. So, just different kind of logic, not the same as this. And if anyone has a dedicated major AVIC out there that can clarify this for me, because I'm not sure, because I've, Actually, I've never seen a ded dedicated Major Havoc, so, and I looked online, I can't find too much info about it, so, anyway, for now, I'm going to disconnect the uh, pulsing 5 volts and put the constant 5 volts on here, and I think I'm just going to keep the 555 five, five in here for now and have a solidly lit trackball, and then later... I'll try to find the right LED to throw in here and see if I can get this to flash and have it look pretty good. Because um, the LEDs don't draw nowhere near as much current as this incandescent bulb. So I think I can safely have two LEDs uh, feeding coming off of this 5 volt line. We have one for the switch um, and then also we'll have a second one here and they'll both be pulsing. Um, which I, which is what I really want. I want I want that trackball to just flash during the attract. I think it'd be look really cool. So, But for now we'll just kind of have it solidly lit with the uh, with the constant five volts so you can see now that it basically there's two options uh, for wiring this the one that we kind of covered in the video but the 555 does look pretty good doesn't it I like that so all right guys there you have it and uh, sorry we, we didn't kind of get that right in the video but you know what I'm just kind of probing around here I should have probably looked at the schematics first and I did not or just researched it a little more but I was a little unclear about how this all worked and I guess there is a constant five and a pulsing five and they both use this uh, this ground that we did use so all right that's it for me uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video I do want to apologize for this being a little bit late I'm having some issues with iMovie and uh, which actually worked out though because I was able to add this little part at the end of the video here the next day and so hopefully if things go all right i'll release this on monday as planned uh a day late but still and uh by the way i do release new videos every sunday so if you guys want to subscribe go ahead and click that subscribe button and then also check out my two podcasts one is called arcade outsiders at arcadeoutsiders.com and then the other podcast is called video game outsiders at videogameoutsiders.com we do both of those podcasts live at allgames.com on tuesday nights so anyway check out those websites and uh again thanks for watching and we'll see you guys later <laughs>